Hello mate and welcome back. In this video we're going to carry on with where we left off in the last video. So let's jump right into this. So there are three main things that you need in any scene whether that be in a movie or in a render and that is lights, camera and of course action. Now the first thing that we're going to focus on is lights. There are various different light sources that we can use in Dash Studio and if I switch over to the IRA preview mode and give it a few seconds to have a bit of a think, we will be able to see what we have in the scene currently. Now, believe it or not, there is actually a light source in this scene and that is because if we come across into our render settings, if I go into the environment, you can see that we're currently using dome and scene and that means that Dash Studio is using any light sources in the scene at the same time as also using an image-based light source. Image-based light sources are basically also known as HDRI light sources and what they are is 360 degree photographs that include luminosity data. They're 32-bit images, they're usually in the region of about 2 to 900 megabytes although that's not all encompassing some are bigger some are smaller and they contain all of the light information as if you were in an environment so for example a sky dome that also includes light data now if I was to switch on a draw dome what you can see is that there is actually a dome all the way around us a bit of blue in the sky a bit of dark underneath us you can see the weird seam where the bottom of the image is compressed into one pixel and there's there's light information in this scene so if i were to create a sphere in our scene don't worry about how i'm doing this for now we will go over this another day and we just hit accept there now what you can see is there is actually light being cast onto this sphere all the way around and as you can see the major light source is in that direction so if we go around to that side of the object it's the brightest now HDRI lighting is really really useful in that it's very very low in terms of resource usage and it allows us to light our scenes theoretically with no other light sources if we chose to. The drawback of this is of course that in order to be able to utilize an HDRI light source or an image based light source we can't have anything in the way. So let's say I create another object I'm just going to quickly create a cube I'm going to make it a four meters big cube and I'm going to just accept that. Now if I was to scroll out slightly and select our cube and make sure I've got the move tool selected as per our previous tutorial if I drag this out what you'll see now is that this creates a shadow over this object. In fact if we were to let's say for argument's sake we drag that over the top of the sphere and then we were to go inside this may or may not work dependent on what we've got there you go so now we're inside the cube there's no light able to get in there um, so we can't actually see the sphere now why is that relevant I hear you cry well let's imagine that you've turned this cube into a house and there's only a few windows inside the amount of light that actually gets into the house is going to be very very low which means if you're trying to light an interior scene just using image based lighting you're probably going to come up against one or two issues so what are our alternatives? Well, we can switch out of image-based lighting and combine it with something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete our cube here so that we go back to just having the sphere in the scene. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in my render settings, I'm going to switch from dome and scene to scene only. Now what you'll see is we're left with another black image where because we've removed the image-based lighting, we've removed the HDRI from our scene. Not ideal, I think you'll agree. However, <laughs> we will work on this. So as you can see, the sphere is still there. It's still there, it's just that Dash Studio has got no light to work with, which is less than ideal. So let's start off by creating, using this image at the top here that looks like a distant light source. We're just going to click on that and it's going to come up with some options. We can apply default settings or we can apply active viewport transforms. Now the difference between the two is this. The distant light source and default settings are going to be where the default camera is. So if we hit that, what you can see is that there's a light source over off to the left there. And if we were to click on this, you can see that the light source is coming from basically X0. 
So directly in front, if we were to select that, now you can see that we are directly in front of the light source. So we can see the lit side, great. But if we were to switch around and go to the back of the object, you can't see any light at all, which is not exactly ideal. What we can do with the distant light is we can actually change the intensity, the color, then we can turn on photometric mode, which allows us to increase or decrease the color temperature and the brightness by using lumens. So for example, if I wanted to change my light source to make it much brighter, I could change the value of the lumens. Let's go to 150,000 and then hit enter. And as you can see now, we've got a really bright light source and it's a really long way. This is a good way of mimicking sunlight. As you can see, it's a very hard light source, which is giving us very hard shadows. So that just allows us to do that. But what happens if you want a different kind of light source? What happens if you want multiple light sources in? Distant light has the same problem as image-based lighting in that if there are objects in the way of the light source, for example, a house, then you're not gonna get any light onto your object. So if we delete that, as you can see, the light disappears once again. So there's other options. The next of those is a simple point light. So we can create a point light and it's going to come up with several options again. We can apply the default settings or we can apply the active viewport transforms. Now I'm going to check this box this time so that when we create our point light, the light source is actually going to appear where the camera is. So if I was to zoom out, there it is. There's our light source. And as you can see, it's not very bright. So we actually need to increase the intensity or increase the lumens. So let's give it to 155,000. And as you can see, now it's creating some light. There are, of course, drawbacks. This also being a point light means that it's going to be a very hard shadow. But we can actually increase the area of our object. So we can increase the diameter and the width to make it slightly larger. So let's go to 100 in height and 100 in width and now we can see that the light source has in fact become much softer now this light source allows us to move it around in our scene which has its uses i'm sure you'll agree it means that this is going to be your first port of call for illuminating objects with a soft light source inside a interior scene or at least it will be until i teach you something else so point light is just a light source that we can move around in our scene and it's going to be nice and simple like that. So let's delete that one. Next thing we've got is a new linear point light. So if we create this in our scene and again we apply the active viewport transforms and then we move our camera, we can see that the light source is up there and it's not casting very much light. So if we go into photometrics, we'll give it 150,000. And then as we can see, that's now creating a nice light source right there now if we move it closer you can see it gets a little bit brighter on our object and illuminates it quite nicely now the differences between the uh, constant or the linear point light and the new point light are fairly unimportant right now we will go into them in more depth at a later date However, right now, all you need to know is that they're both light sources which emanate from a single point that allow us to move the light source around inside our scene. So I'm just going to delete that one like that. Now, the penultimate light source, the last one that I want to mention from the top of the toolbar here, is going to be creating a new spotlight. So let's say I just reset my camera back to the default position by clicking on this arrow in a circle icon in the top right hand corner of my viewport. And I want to create a spotlight. So I'm going to click on create new spotlight. If I show options, you can see there's a default settings and there is apply active viewport transforms. So I'm just going to hit the default settings and turn it on. And as you can see, a spotlight has appeared at x0 pointing straight forward at our object and as before it's not very strong so let's just select our light there we can go into lumens and we'll go 150,000 on that one again but the problem is this time is that our sphere is actually around the light source so we need to drag our light source out of the way or drag the cube out of the way and now you can see that there is in fact light being emanated onto that object in a spot formation. Now what we can see is we have lots and lots of different controls here. We've got a spread angle which we can increase and we can decrease to make it a traditional spotlight. We can increase the height 
and the width of the light source. Or what we can do is we can actually now jump into our spotlight viewport and treat it as if it were a camera. So we can rotate around our sphere object. Let's say I select a sphere there and I click on this icon here, which tells the camera to focus on the sphere. Now I can rotate this camera around the sphere and point at any part of it that I want to, which is useful in certain ways. Now, if I was to click back to default view, there you can see I'm pretty much straight above it and it's a nice bright light source. However, I tend to avoid using spotlights, point lights and distant lights for the simple fact is that they tend to be very restricted in their uses. What I'm going to show you now is the light source that I generally recommend for everybody to use. It is the mesh light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new primitive and it's going to be a sphere. And I'm going to make this one 0.1 meters. The number of segments and size doesn't really matter at this point. There we go. So I'm going to select the sphere here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the right hand pane, go to the surfaces tab and I'm going to expand these properties until I can see these options here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the emission property and as you can see there's a black bar here right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the black bar and I'm going to change my light source color to white. What that does, as you can see, is gives us some new options. What it effectively has done is turned our mesh into a light source and it's giving us options on what we can do with that. I'm going to change the luminance units to KCD over M to the power of 2. And then I'm going to change my luminance up. I'm going to go up to about 25,000 and I'm going to turn it on. Now what you can see is that there's actually light being emanated from our tiny little sphere. And it is a tiny little sphere. And it's a really, really tiny light source. Now, if I wanted to affect the amount of light coming out of that, I can adjust the luminosity property in the emission, the luminance. I can just keep increasing that. Or if I want to make it a harder or softer light source, what I can do is increase or decrease the size. So let's go to our parameters and I can scale up our sphere. As you can see, the light's getting brighter and the sphere's getting bigger. If I was to go really, really high, now you can see that that light source is still getting bigger and the light source, the light is getting stronger. If I were to go up to maybe 10,000%, now you can see that's a really big light source and it's casting quite a crazy amount of light there on the object. So what I can do is I can reduce the power of the light source now, come back down, or I can just switch it to CD. Uh, there we go. And as you can see now, we've got a glowing light source and we've got our object in the scene. Now, there's two reasons why I prefer doing this. And the first thing is that you can actually see the dimensions of the light source. You can see the sphere is nice and big so we're going to get nice soft shadows around the back of the object and also we can reduce the opacity of this object to create what we call in the industry a ghost light which is essentially a light source that can't be seen but we can adjust many of the properties and these are our main options for lights in my humble opinion the ghost lights are vastly superior to any of the other light sources just purely because of their versatility and their simplicity I hope you found that useful guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to seeing your comments and I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Okay, bye-bye.